It's hard to imagine being the last of your kind. Being isolated, surrounded, and threatened. But against the odds, even when every outcome pointed to an all but certain doom for this species, life found a way. Deep in the heart of the Caribbean Sea, on one of its many craggy islands, lives a lizard that has been brought back from the brink of extinction and now roams this tropical landscape by the hundreds. That island is Grand Cayman, and that lizard is none other than the blue iguana. And while an iguana might not immediately strike you as being unique or noteworthy, I assure you, this one absolutely is, because it's blue. Very blue, making it one of the most beautiful and rarest iguanas on the planet. Now, to put things in perspective, these lizards dwindled all the way down to an estimated 15 total individuals in the wild, making them functionally extinct. Which is where our friend Fred Burton steps in. Directly responsible for creating the Blue Iguana Recovery Program, Fred has offered us the unique opportunity to get up close with these endangered reptiles and toward the facility he started 15 years ago. With such a rare chance to see one of these creatures in person, the crew and I loaded up our cameras and made our way to the most remote part of the island. Right now, what we're doing is we're trying to find one of the resident blue iguanas that's habituated to humans. His name is Peter, and apparently he's big and friendly and a great ambassador for his species. So we're trying to get close to Peter, try to get the GoPro up close, try to get the cameras up close, so you can see why this is such a unique lizard species. So, Fred, you wanna lead the way? So Peter's on his favorite rock. Oh, is this Peter here? Look at him, yes. Now that is an impressive iguana. All right, guys, let's uh, come in Peter's enclosure here. Wow, look at that. Let's get a shot of Peter before we approach, just in case he wants to hop off that rock, because that is a great display of a blue iguana right there. Yeah, this is a unique species. It's only found in Grand Cayman. Okay, yeah. so the blue iguana is endemic to the Cayman Islands, and it is a species of rock iguana. We've seen rock iguanas in the past, but I have never seen one this color. I mean, and you're telling me that these blue iguanas get even more blue than this. When they're in the breeding season, yeah. He's kind yeah. of dull right now. Really? Um, when he gets hot wow, and excited. Dull. I think you look great. And in March and April, when he's courting the girls, mm -hmm. he's, he, he will blaze blue. Um, really, really, really bright. Hi, Peter. Are we buddies? Are we gonna be pals? I think so. So Fred, tell us a little bit about Peter. How did he come to the uh, program and why is he so friendly? He's an interesting case because we were just walking around out in the open there a good many years ago and we saw a young two-year-old just on the gravel and we thought, where did he come from? Figured it must have been one of the free-roaming iguanas had laid and hatched and whatnot. But we start thinking, okay, we better catch it so we can get a blood sample and do the genetics and all this thing. So we're creeping up to this thing and it's just looking at it. It's not afraid, yeah. you know, and we just walk up to this iguana and pick him up and he doesn't run away. And he's been like that ever since. He's, he, he, it's like he was born without the fear gene. You know, he, wow. just, he doesn't, he has no natural reaction to Friendly humans. since day one. I like it. So Peter's turning more blue because he's warming up to us. Is that what this is? He likes the attention, yeah. All right. Well, who doesn't like a good head scratch? So quick little uh, disclaimer to everybody at home. Don't go up to a wild iguana and pet it. This is uh, not uh, a normal iguana. This Definitely. is an iguana that has been habituated to humans and is used to this kind of interaction and is why we are able to get so close to Peter today. If you try to do this to a wild rock iguana, you're gonna get bit. And if you look here at Peter's mandibles, they have quite the powerful bite and they also have a couple rows of razor sharp teeth. So you definitely do not want to get your finger or your hand caught in the jaws of a wild rock iguana. So best to leave them alone and give them their safe distance. But man, are they cool. So these, um, these beads, we put on every iguana we release. And we also put them on the captive iguanas in case they get out. Mm. And the idea is the combination of bead sizes and bead colors is unique to each animal. So that uh, 
you know, if we're walking around the park and we see an iguana and we want to know who that is, all we need to do is train binoculars on the beads, look them up in the database, and we'll know exactly who we're dealing with. But the other thing I we think do... Peter's sleeping. The other thing we do <laughs> is we photograph the sides and the top of his head. Mm -hmm. And these big and large scales, if you look at the scales on his snout here, they're all a little bit irregular. Right? They don't, they're not perfectly symmetrical. Okay, yeah, yeah, and yeah. every iguana has a slightly different scale pattern. It's like a fingerprint. So we got pictures of this guy, and if this guy turned up somewhere he didn't want to be, and the pit tag was gone and the bead tag was gone, we'd still be able to match the photograph and say, that is that iguana. That is Peter. That is Peter. But just judge on how we're able to approach Peter, I don't think it would take very long to figure out who it was. <laughs> So one of the other cool things about rock iguanas generally are the toes. Okay. So this is like a, a hook. Looks like a talon to me. So they can, they, they're quite good at climbing trees. Mm -hmm. They don't, they, you know, they spend most of the time on the ground, but they're quite good at climbing trees. And these, these, these claws hang onto things really effectively. And for females digging nests, of course, they're great for digging too. But the, the weird thing is, you know how our hands bend like this? These guys bend like this. Oh, they bend right to left. They don't bend this way. They don't bend this way, but they bend backwards. That is very interesting, Peter. And think about why, because right there, they're constantly pulling this thing through vegetation. And now, Fred, is there any other distinct characteristic about the blue iguana that's worth noting today? I like to mention this little thing here. Okay. You see that little scale there? It looks translucent. I do. So that's the pineal eye, mm -hmm. and that's a very primitive feature in reptiles, but these aren't primitive animals. Right. Um, light can get through there, and we think that there is a brain receptor in there, and they probably, we don't know this for sure, but we suspect that they use this for tracking day length, and that's how they subconsciously know what time of year it is, and the triggers for when they need to start thinking about breeding season and all that sort of thing. Very unique sensory mechanism. Very yeah. cool, Peter. A lot of the stuff that I've described to you is useful because what we need always is for people to relate to these animals. If we want to conserve an animal like this, people need to be engaged in it, right? right? And the thing about an animal like this is it's, it's, it, it responds to us in a way. We can, we can understand it. We can empathize. So knowing about the iguanas helps us tell stories about them. And we tell stories about these iguanas and people start to love them. And if people start to love them, they want us to preserve them. And that's, that's the way it all works. Well, I think Peter has done a phenomenal job today hanging out with us so we can learn more about his species. And as far as lovability, I mean, I think you. the proof is you. right here, guys. This is <laughs> about the coolest customer I've ever witnessed when it comes to an iguana. Thank you very much for hanging out, Peter. And thank you, Fred. Really appreciate the tour of the facility. Great work on bringing back this population of beautiful reptiles. Without the efforts put in place by Fred and now sustained by the National Trust's Blue Iguana Recovery Program, these lizards would almost certainly no longer exist in the wild. What they have done for the blue iguana is truly remarkable and always makes us proud to tell one of these heroic efforts to save such a special creature. If you would like to catch a glimpse of the famous blue iguana for yourself, drop by the Queen Elizabeth II Botanic Gardens website to book a tour with the Blue Iguana Recovery Program, where you can get up close with this endemic species and if you're lucky enough, may even get to meet Peter himself. But just don't disturb him if he's resting. The star of the island needs his beauty sleep.